during the last many months, most of the Afghan professionals have scattered around the world like the beads of a broken necklace, trying to redefine themselves and their lives. I myself had to give up my career. I had I had to put a pause on a vision that I worked so hard on. The vision that no teenage girl in my country would be barred from school the way I was when I was a teenager. But that's in pause. I have to redefine my entire life. But the issues and trouble that I went to pales to the miseries that my people are facing every single day, day in and day out. More than 24 million people are in need of humanitarian aid to survive. This is over half of the population. 95% of families face insufficient food consumption. And 9.6 million children don't know if they are going to eat today. A million people have lost their jobs. And almost all citizens now live below poverty line. While we highlight these shocking statistics, let us not forget that these are not simply numbers. These are the convergence of the past, presence, and futures of generations of Afghans. And it is current and inherited from the widespread, widespread poverty that starves peoples of hope and fosters more resentment and insecurity about what lies ahead. For the past 50 years, the country has been the battleground of tag of wars between global and regional powers and a completely forgotten land in between the poles. In 1970s, Afghanistan became the front for the Cold War between this former Soviet Union and the United States. After the collapse of the former Soviet Union, the country was forgotten for an entire decade of 1990s. It was during this time that it plunged into civil war between the insurgent groups who helped push Soviet Union out before and uh, among themselves. A civil war that led the emergence of the first takeover of Taliban in 1996. What you probably remember of all that time uh, about Afghanistan is the terrifying images that you were watching in your television. People rushing to Kabul airport and clinging to the parts of the airplane trying to find safety and rescue themselves. But what followed immediately after was collapse of the economy due to the suspension of the international aid that comprised over 50% of the country's budget. Freezing of Afghan foreign services, uh, reserve, uh, sorry, uh, the freezing of Afghan foreign reserves, and immediate isolation of Afghanistan from the rest of the world. The humanitarian crisis that is experienced now in Afghanistan is a symptom of the policies of the countries involved in Afghanistan over past decades. It is also a result of poor leadership in Afghanistan, as well as the failure of development assistance programs. Like every crisis, no one suffers most other than women. 50% of the students in schools were women. Now, more than a million are banned from getting an education beyond sixth grade. Women are not allowed to participate in politics, not allowed to move freely, and not even dress in the color of their choice. A year ago, women represented 27% of the civil service, 40% of teachers, 77% of women led civil society organizations that have been shut down while those still functioning facing 
significant threats and oppression and the financial risks. And while the Afghan Women's Chambers of Commerce have more than 33,500 licensed small and medium female, we must be asking you, at, at this time, we all must be asking ourselves, where is the international community in this crisis? What has been done? Before I go into the details of humanitarian assistance, I can answer this question in two simple words, not 